Hey, let's uh, talk about hard drives, some secrets of hard drives. And as owner of hundreds of hard drives and have taken apart hundreds of hard drives, uh, let's talk about some tips and tricks on hard drives. Here's a uh, question, it's not a trick question. Say you have two identical hard drives, like two of these, for example. Identical manufacturer, identical size. Which one is more reliable? The one that's been spinning and in use for two years or the one that was uh, just started spinning say 30 days ago someone bought it 30 days ago and it's running and the other one is running at the same rate and it's been running for two years the one that's two years old is always much more reliable why it's two years old the other one's only been running for 30 days it's called hard drive infant mortality and you can take a look at it you'll find hundreds of websites on that in other words your drive due to slight manufacturing nuances, defects, um, is far more susceptible to failure if it's new, if it's actually survived several months. It's, uh, it's uh, much more reliable. All hard drives crash, okay? Now when we say crash, of course we mean several different things, it means it's failed. Nobody knows exactly what failed 99% of the time because nobody knows how hard drives work. But uh, all hard drives fail. The uh, mean average time to failure is uh, five to six and a half years. The actual average, I think, currently is about five and a half years. By the way, point number two. If your hard drive has failed, it's not your hard drive's fault. The uh, fault lies with the person in the mirror because you have royally screwed up. If you ever need data recovery off of a hard Oh my god, my hard drive crashed! Oh no! If you ever need that the only thing that screwed up was not the hard drive but it was you 100 percent you anytime a professional has a hard drive complete and total failure they don't give a single damn because they have multiple backups um archives there's a huge difference between backups and archives by the way but i'm not gonna get into that in this video there's actually four main points of failure well these are actually older hard drives i actually wanted to show you this one just uh, for the hell of it. This is an older server grade hard drive. Now the newer ones are made out of aluminum and of course they're coated which is where the uh, the uh, ferromagnetic layer is that the uh, head and the armature writes the data to. Basically kind of like a record. If you can actually look closely this is an old server grade hard drive and uh, the platters are made out of tempered glass. You can actually see some of the hard drive read write material still exists right at the center which is where the table of contents would be. Yeah but you can see that it's completely transparent. Uh, when I actually opened up these and they're neat there's some of these older hard drives. Not that old actually. Um, the inside down here is just completely covered in dust and this is no joke. These uh, had spun for so long and for so many years, they had literally spun the data um, right off of into dust. So the actual data itself was completely gone because you can't read and write to tempered glass. The only read-write layer here is this reflective layer you can actually see right here on the discs. These are completely transparent tempered glass. And man, when you break one, they shatter, they actually explode. Tempered glass doesn't break, it explodes. And these are highly tempered, they really explode. Um, but they are very beautiful. Um, major components of failure. You know what head crash is? This is the reason why you should never have a portable hard drive um, for your laptop, for packing around. Why is that? Because everybody will be like in the back seat of the car or the passenger seat or somewhere traveling and they'll plug it in or even if you're in a stationary place, you know, you're sitting there moving the hard drive around, moving your laptop and you'll pick, get up and move and you know what a head crash is? You know how fast these are actually uh, spinning? Either 5400 RPM or 7200 RPM. The only thing that actually keeps the heads of the hard drives from crashing in is that they're spinning so fast they create a, a, a cushion of air that the actual uh, uh, head rides above. And you know what happens when you actually move this hard drive or torque it like this, like, okay, this is my, I'm in the car, or in the car, for example, and the car is going over a bumpy road like this, you know what happens? Ha, oh, head crash. That's right. Or is that, why shouldn't you move your hard drive when it's running? Hey, head crash. Head crash. That's right. Um, major. This is also too. When I want to talk about this. This is the actual main motor, obviously, that spins the hard drive up. You know why you should never buy a hard drive that's over uh, four terabytes in size? 
You'll notice that they're moderately thick. This, of course, is an old uh, three and a half inch, two and a half inch, excuse me, uh, actually from a, a laptop that I used to have. The reason why is they actually have so many platters, no matter how good they're made, and I've I own some of the most expensive hard drives with server grade hard drives. Like there's a new version, but the old versions are the Western Digital Blacks. This is the motor that actually spins them up back here. That's located in this part of this, this is the hard drive uh, controller board. Hard drive controller board failure is only currently at about 10%. When you say a hard drive's failed, you have an extremely low likelihood of failure of the hard drive controller board. But the reason why you never buy a hard drive over four terabyte. Well, you know, I want to buy one of those. Um, here's two reasons why, actually. I want to buy one of those hard drives that got like eight terabytes, 12 terabytes, six terabytes. Number one is called uh, putting all your eggs into one basket, which is always an extremely bad idea. And number two, because there's so many platters, when the hard drive uh, spins down, say you're not using it, you need to step out of the house, you go take a piss, right? And you come back. The motor keeps spinning up, lay, I mean, uh, platter after platter after platter, like on the 6, 8, and 12 terabyte hard drives. There's an enormous amount of mass because you just got tons of layers of pancakes here. You see this one is a, this is an older one, but this is a uh, 5 platter uh, hard drive. It's spinning up so much mass that it actually strains the motor and the motor fails. The main reason why the 6 terabyte or 8 terabyte or hard drives fail is because there's too much goddamn mass that the motor is spinning up all the damn time. Yeah, don't buy anything above a 4 terabyte. Yeah, but it's only an 8 terabyte hard drive. Yeah, don't buy it. Always, too, for portability for your laptop, buy a solid state drive. A current uh, 1 terabyte solid state SanDisk is, uh, what are they, like 150 bucks? I got a couple of them. I got a bunch of 500 gigger solid state drives, which average like $110. Um, head crash. Yeah, don't move your hard drives. Let's make... Here's another fact. Everybody that knows a lot about hard drives, the more you know about hard drives, let's just put it this way, the more shocked you are that they even work at all. You know, when you learn about how a hard drive works, the first thing that will go through your head when you learn everything, you'll go, oh my god, how do they even work at all? Or how do they even last, you know, any period of time? Well, like I said the mean average lifespan is about five and a half. I think it's been bumped up now to yeah. I still I think it's still this thing is hovering around five and a half years. Remember our hard drive infant mortality. If you ever need data recovery, you have really screwed up. No, no, my hard drive failed. No, you failed. No, 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 my hard drive failed. No, you failed. No, you don't understand. You know, I was using my hard drive. It's been working fine for three years, and it just uh, no, you didn't have a backup in an archive. No, you failed. No, my hard drive failed. No, you failed. Um, that's a fact. Please, God, remember that. Some of the newer hard drives, too, to cut down on friction. And of course, heat causes uh, thermal breakdown. Actually causes a slight degaussing of the neodymium iron borons here. It actually causes... Uh, like the heat actually caused this uh, read-write layer to uh, delaminate off these glass discs. In this case, they're aluminum discs, as is currently. Uh, what they're doing is they're making these airtight, and uh, they're sucking all the air out of them and filling them up with helium, which uh, greatly reduces heat and friction. But you know what? That's wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah, but hard drive failure is still no different. Yeah, I better cut the... Yeah, they yeah they generate less heat. Anyway, so just remember that. Don't buy anything over a 4 terabyte drive. By the way, when you actually send in a hard drive for really, really expensive data recovery, if you've had a head crash, if you ever hear this in your hard drive, people say, oh, my hard drive's clicking. It's going this, click, 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 click. You're screwed! Let me repeat that again. You know, I hear this all the time. You say, ah, what, what's wrong with your hard drive? Is you have a SATA bridge controller failure? And I was like, what are your hard drive doing? It's going to click, 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 click. We call that a click of death, and that means you're screwed. You can still recover your data, but you have to send it off, and it'll be really, really expensive. What they'll actually do is rip the armature off, unscrew the platters. They'll find an identical hard drive, unscrew the platters off of that, mount your platters into the new hard drive, and then get the information off of that. Really, really expensive, laborious, shitty procedure. Like I said, when the hard drive takes a poop on itself and every hard drive will take a giant poop on itself it wasn't the hard drive that failed it was it was you you were the source of that problem 
because you didn't learn that every hard drive will take a poop on itself. Like a person on life support wearing a pair of Depends yeah, hooked up to, yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It will fail. Every one of them. Yeah, but it's been working well for years. I got nothing to work. No. You know, shut up and listen to me. It will fail. Period. There you go. There's hard drives in a nutshell. Back up your data and make archives, okay? Yeah, and for your uh, laptop, get a solid state drive. Yeah, but solid state drives cost too much money. I don't care. Buy a solid state drive. Shut the hell up. Okay? I hope you like this video. It was educational and funny. Kinda, sorta, maybe. Anyway, if you like the video, click the link below. Tell me how much you hate me. Mm, yeah, hard drives. You love them, you hate them. I, I both love them and hate them.